Yeah, your boy uh, Gallon Bear has been wearing a Boise State shirt for like 20 minutes. Oh, he committed to Boise State? Yeah. And it, Are you fucking I, I couldn't hear it because obviously I was doing this, but it seemed like the most boring fucking announcement I've ever seen in my life. He's got this white backdrop. He's been sitting at a computer the entire time, and he just casually threw on a Boise State shirt. It was fucking weird. I didn't even know if, like, yeah, I didn't even know um, if that was a thing. This is not a good look for family. This is not a good look at all. It's not a good look for Jay Harbaugh either, but it's really not a good look for, for Ron Bellamy. Jay Harbaugh has added some dudes to this roster. Yep. Chris Evans, Donovan Edwards, like he's added some guys. I think he recruited DPJ, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. You lost a recruitment to Boise State? Bruh, bruh. Bruh. If Cornelius Johnson or Roman Wilson don't go over a thousand yards this season, we let's call around, man. What are our options? Like, I understand that we're not going to rake in five-star wide receivers to come here and block. I, I understand that. There are a, a litany of four-star wide receivers that would love to put on that winged helmet. I don't know what Ron Bellamy's recruiting approach is or why he has trouble closing with guys that he was previously trending with. Like, this is kind of a thing with him now. So... Nick Marsh after he dis uh after he uh, uh decommitted from Michigan State and then went back to Michigan State. You couldn't win that? You couldn't get that guy to come and talk to you? Obviously Jordan Ship, same thing. Like damn, I, I get it. Hometown guy, North Carolina, more offensive team, cool. We have two of his top teammates. His quarterback and his other wide receiver on the other side of him. Not to mention we're 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 in the fight with the left tackle on his team right now from his high school too. We're getting, trying to recruit his whole damn high school team. Yeah. Like what? The, what am I missing here? You, you, Ron Bellamy, are the only guy. Well, no, don't let me say that. No, he's the only guy that's consistently missing. Everybody else, you know, you hit, you lose some, you win some. He's consistently missing. Marion Stewart or Channing Goodwin was the last guy to to commit, and he that was in May. I mean, you guys got Ryan Wingo, but he's not going to come in until December. December, and then why am I confident? That if you can't close with a kid from Idaho against Boise State, you can't convince him that he's going to be playing football in obscurity for the next four years after he takes his two-year mission? Yeah. You can't convince him of that? Like, you can't just shoot the shit. Like, listen, I understand you want to go play on the blue field, but... What conference is Boise playing right now? Mountain West. What, what conference will they be playing in two years from now when you get back? Will the Mountain West even be a thing? Will the Pack have to raid the Mountain West to Could stay be. alive? Could be. Uh, you know, again, same thing I said on Aaron Scott, man. Congratulations to the kid on his decision. Obviously, if he didn't make the decision to go to Michigan, we didn't win the recruitment, and that's on the coach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, KJ Bolden is probably going to come up in the next four minutes, so I guess we'll we'll sign off until then. Florida State, why? 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 No, oh, he's doing a tomahawk. Why? Why are you going to Florida State? All right, live reaction. Let's get it in here. I, I am actually kind of upset about that because it's like, okay. Your, your spurning family don't care. But the thought was always, it's for Georgia. And that is understandable. It's it's the team. They won back-to-back -back championships. You live in Georgia. You're friends now with Dylan Rayola. High school with Dylan Rayola. Like, Georgia made sense. Like, I, I would not be mad if I lost to Georgia because, or I, if I lost, if I specifically lost. No, if we lost to Georgia, that would make perfect sense because all signs pointed to that. They're the team to beat. Got it. Cool. Whatever. What is so great about Florida State right now? That they're coming up. They, they got they are it. An they, ascending team. I do they're, think they're a legitimate ascending team. I do think team. they will beat the, the. I think they'll beat Clemson. I think they'll probably even beat LSU, and make their way to the playoffs next year. They haven't done it yet. So what do you see in FSU right now 
that's so pertinent that I have to go there over okay, family so, and the number one team in the nation. So maybe it's what I what I thought might have been Aaron Scott's thought process in okay, yeah, I like Ohio State, but schematically and just like development wise, there seems to have been a a a little bit of a drop off from Denzel Ward to now Denzel Burke. You know, like there's a little bit of a difference there. Like, sure, I thought Denzel Ward was burnt toast in college, but he went to the NFL, made a made a name for himself. But there's 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 a there's a little bit of a difference now with the corners that we see coming through the Ohio State program. Like, you would really have to just take it on faith that it's going to be better. And obviously, that's what the Scots thought. Like, we're, we're, we're thinking that we're going to be part of an upward swing here. AJ didn't take it take it for, for granted. He didn't, he didn't take the prospect of something being better over better. The prospect of being they, better. Florida you know, State has a better secondary than Ohio State right now? I, but I don't think they're going to go far with that. Like, I, I think they're going to make the playoffs. I think... Very possibly, well, obviously, you know I have Ohio State going undefeated and winning the national championship. Mm. So if you're happy that the secondary is better, that's great, but you're not going to win a championship with that. And e- even even if Ohio State doesn't make it, I don't have Florida State winning the national championship. So They got a guy y'all wanted. They got Fentrell Cyphers. They have a guy y'all wanted too. Mm. And I would pick Michigan over FSU. So, I mean, I I don't even because he's a twenty twenty four right, so he's not going to be there this season anyways. I, I think that I don't know. It, 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 I haven't really followed the KJ Bolden recruitment all like that because we weren't in on him. So, and then what what's up with the Auburn thing? What why did you even throw that in there if you weren't going it was to? Cap. Sure, it was Cap. But why are you hyping up Hugh Freeze as this great coach? The only person that <laughs> thinks Auburn has or had a good program at you know in the last fifteen years, besides when they had Cam Newton, is Josh Pate. He swears by he swears Auburn is a good program outside the last two uh, years. Fair. You, just, you just wait on them to get it right. Auburn's coming, says Josh Pate. But there's but, no um, there was absolutely no reason to pump up Hugh Freeze as much as he did, just to be like, oh yeah, no, nah, but fuck your school. I'm going to Florida State. <laughs> We, we've got a similar kind of battle coming up here with Zaquan Patterson in Miami. I think Michigan makes the most sense once again. We, we, we've been here before, so we'll, we'll see how that shakes out. But um, yeah, man, you win some, you lose some. Uh, yeah, I, ultimately, I did not think we were for sure going to get KJ Bolton. I was excited to see if maybe we could pull him, but I wasn't sold. Once once we start giving up, despite the fact that he has family in the organization. Okay, yeah, we, we must not have a shot. Let's take a look at the recruiting rankings here. Yeah, Georgia one in the composite, Ohio State two with 19 commitments. Woo! I know I'm not looking at that right. This can't be fucking right. Florida got the number three recruiting class in the country. No, I think you're looking at that right. 21 commits, a 91.72 average score. I think, you're looking uh, at right. I think they Michigan. picked up some some uh, about three recruits. No, no, they that picked were up high. like three or four defensive recruits on like one weekend. Yeah, they, that weekend yeah. they got um, Aaron Childs. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michigan's at four with a twenty-seven re- commitments. Damn, we're oof. Twenty-seven already. Yeah, we just got uh, Josiah Love. That was our our cornerback backup plan. 27 recruits already, 90.64 average rating. Uh, Penn State is five with 24 commitments. Penn State is five? Yeah. Sheesh. Yeah. Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State are all in the top five of recruiting. That's crazy. Right but, hey, man, you know, all the talent goes to the south, man. They're so much farther, bigger, stronger, faster than us up here in the Big Ten, us slow Midwest boys. Oh, we, we, we don't know no real football. It's all SEC. SEC, baby. Well, the good thing that I can uh, react to or the, the plus that I can give a reaction to 
is that I'm going to search KJ Bolton's name and see how many Georgia fans are going to be crying throughout Twitter right He's now. Fucking so I can at least look forward to that. Yeah, I know they're gonna be. I know they're gonna be trying to fire up on, on Ron Bellamy for sure. But I, I do think he has to wear some criticism for that. I think the staff, even though we've had a much like night and day different class than what we had in uh, in 2021. They still, or 2022, the 2022 class is the one that came in like 18. But we still have had kind of like a problem with closing, I feel like. like our recruiting class probably should have been done a couple months ago. Yeah. If you, if, if you close on Aaron Childs when he wants to commit, if you get Bennett Warren when he wants to commit, if you get Jordan Ship, if you can get Gatlin Bear when they're trending – we're done. Like, we don't even have time to entertain Brian Wingo or Brian Robinson or anybody else that's hanging around out there. I don't know what the hell Brian Robinson is doing. Fam, if you're going to Kentucky, go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to Kentucky, go. What are you waiting on? Yeah. Um, I didn't even see, I didn't see Kentucky anywhere. Where is Kentucky at? Let's see. They're probably not that high up. But to that same sentiment, I feel like we have missed wow. out on Kentucky a lot of is 40th. Ew. Ooh. They're 40th. Yikes. 15 commits with the 87.92 average rating score. Hey, you go there if you want to, fam. <laughs> you go there if you want to. I would say Brian Robinson could probably look for a uh, offer coming his way, but we did get that linebacker from Northwestern, so it's probably not coming now. You talking about Glover? Oh, he's yeah, going to play yeah, a linebacker for y'all, huh? One of the guys who uh, comments on the videos, Music, he's an Ohio State fan. He, he mentioned that. We were thinking box safety, so he, he wasn't even about to play linebacker with us. He could. I, I thought he was playing linebacker for Northwestern. I, I, we, who knows what he was going to play? He was a recruit. He was in the 20th Yeah, that's true. Class. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, I could see him being a safety, but we'll see. But, um... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I I feel the same way about our recruits. When it came to, obviously, all the offensive recruiting, we got that in the bag. Everything was great. Now we're coming into filling in some of these spots for defense, and it's just like Lightfoot, uh, Dylan Stewart, KVA. But are, are, oh, if you're Brian Robinson, man, you already put it out there that you wanted the offer. Are you really going to watch them, like, Chase that KVA, Lightfoot, Dylan Stewart, Elias Rudolph, smelling all these guys' butts for all these months. We still got Edric Houston. Strike out and then be like, hey, uh, you know, hometown kid, da 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 da. Next <laughs> great pass record in Ohio State. Like, what does that feel like, yo? Like, I know what it feels like to me. I know what that would feel like to me. I don't, I don't, I think they waited. I think he has waited too long and he's limited his options. I think y'all have waited too long, and it would almost be a disrespect at this point if you made the offer. I don't think we're going to make the offer out to him now. I think he's going to go to Kentucky, and that's the end of it. Why? I think he maybe expected the class at Kentucky to be a little bit better than it is now. 40? Yeah, I would hope. I would hope. Uh, maybe he was expecting some other guys to go there with him. But it don't look like nobody going there with you, bro. I don't no, think, no. I don't think that's the move. And you're going to be mid-tier SEC, bottom mid-tier SEC at that. So, have fun with that. But Josh Pate will sing your praises. Great. Aaron Scott has made his decision, and he did so in such a, a wonderfully classic way to wrap up his recruitment because it's been nothing but trolling. And he ended it by kind of trolling a little bit. Thoughts on that at all? Did you see the actual? Yeah, okay. yeah, I did. I, I, it didn't bother me. I think he wanted a reaction, and I wasn't gonna give it to him. But con congratulations to him in his decision. I hope it works out for him. I, I don't expect it to, but you know, not not that I don't expect him to be a decent player. It just he's here what, to win. What am I to say? He's here to win a he championship. Went, he went to the better secondary. No, he went to the better. Defensive back coaching staff. I you went to the better defense overall. I, 
Tim Walton and Perry Eliano will be proving that wrong, but it's okay. That could that could all change this season. It could be completely night and day from what it was last year. Where it stands now, where it is like today, August 5th, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, but I will say congratulations and we'll see you on the field. Fair enough. It's a, it's a good classy way to, uh, to it's, answer it's that. The only way so it's, it's, it's really, yeah, I was going to say, it's really all you the can only do. Way to take it, cause if you're going to sit up here and, and let these let these high school, these 15, 16, 17, and 18 year olds <laughs> get you in such a tizzy that you're going to get on the internet and like talk about them like they did something to you personally, mental illness. There's something wrong with I you. Agree. You're, you're I agree. You walk. This shit ain't have nothing to do with you in the first place. You was lucky you was even involved. <laughs> right. It's a little weird that's a whole business built around it, too. Yeah. But, hey, choose who you choose. Now, I'm going to tell you if I think you made a boneheaded decision. I think so. And, and, and in any case, let me run you a scenario. As we stand today, right, when he made his decision, I think we can both agree where each team ranks in terms of defense and secondary, Right. Now, we're expecting this season to kind of prove something out and, and, and improve that status for Ohio State and solidify a decision that was made back in July that's supposed to last all the way to January for signing day. Sure. Ohio State goes to the season and the defense hasn't improved. Are you still confident that some of those players on your roster that went there with the idea that they were going to be part of a defensive revival are still, you know, of that mindset seeing what they saw that season. You got to keep them signed, and people aren't going to stop calling. We are not going to stop calling. Oh, Justin Scott, you were going to Michigan? Okay, cool. So the first time Ohio State give up 200 rushing yards right up the gut, I'm calling Justin Scott. Hey, what's up, Justin? Yeah, man, I know you just love to play for Larry Johnson, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, that's wild. If I wanted to be a beanbag, I would too. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm just saying, if the season defensively at least doesn't go, doesn't improve how Ohio State fans expect it to improve this year, are you safe on Justin Scott? Are you safe on Aaron Scott? Are you safe on, I'm trying to think of Miles Lockhart or any of the other defensive guys that you got? I don't think Bryce West is going anywhere. I think he was, he was pretty much Ohio State from the time that he decided sure. to go play high school football at Glenville. Yeah. Um, but you know, any of the other guys. That's all fair. I at least think that based off of the changes that we've seen to the lineup within training camp, there's there's something going on. Because, like, from what I've seen, they don't even have Igbenosin with the ones. Like, the safeties have Jaha Carter, uh, who is from Syracuse, uh, Sonny Styles, and... I can't remember the third off the top of my head. I'll, I'll probably edit it in here. Yeah, like they have, they don't even have Igbenosin with the ones. And I think the nickel that they have is technically Sonny Styles. We got Denzel Burke and Jordan Hancock playing cornerback. And then they've got Jihad Carter, Sonny Styles, and I believe they've got Lathan Ransom in as well. The safety. safeties. Yeah. So at least as of right now, they don't even have Igbenosin at the one. So as I'm looking at it right now, I just because I hadn't watched many Ole Miss games last year, wasn't sure how good they were on defense. I knew he was a freshman All-American. So that tells me one of two things, right? He either played and was part of a really good defense and he played his role and played adequately and they kind of measured that out relative to how good the defense was and what his impact was, or they were trash. He was the only golden spot, and he was the only person that couldn't get cooked. Ole Miss was 57th in total defense last year. Here's the other thing, though. They have Igbenosin listed as a safety on the depth chart. Oh, he's not playing corner at all. I think he's going to be playing the nickel. Uh, and he, it seems like he's probably fighting for time with Sonny Styles. I would assume. Was he not a boundary corner? He was a corner, yeah. At all, yeah. Uh, okay. So I don't, I don't. All right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The changes, the changes. I don't know what to really make of them at this point, and I don't even know if they're going to stick with those same changes. But you know, we've got the, we got the guys. It seems like we've got the depth. 
They're even putting, I think I've seen that they're putting Court Williams, who's been injured the last, I think, season, season and a half, who was playing safety at linebacker now, which I don't know how that's going to impact C.J. Hicks playing or, I don't know. They're doing some funky shit. That's all, that's all I know. I mean, mix it around, I guess. We'll, we'll see what it looks like at the end of this month, I guess. Yeah. Um, whew. Oh, I can't wait. I, I feel like wait 28 either. days. It feels like 28 years. I don't know, man. It's been kind of a, a short off season to me, but it's because uh, we've been talking about it a lot. Probably, probably, probably. But I, 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 I don't think anybody's going to stop calling those guys. I don't think Oregon's going to stop calling Aaron Scott. We're obviously not. Same thing on Justin Scott. Notre Dame's not going to tuck their tail and run. You think Notre Dame puts puts up a legitimate fight against Ohio State? They're not going to. Hey, look, man, we're going to send you the all-22 footage. We want your eyes in between the hashes the entire game, and you tell us what you see. And you tell us what you see. I think NIL is it's a scale tipper, right? And it's a pretty definitive scale tipper. So if it's close on the border, too close to call, coin flip type scenarios, the NIL winner usually is, can tug that their way. Yeah. Does that make you make a bad football decision? It should be. It's rare. Like, there, there are a couple of guys every cycle that make, like, real, like, head-scratcher decisions that, like, just don't, doesn't really make sense at all. Not just from what they told you they wanted, but just, like, for any football player. Yeah. You know, it just yeah. doesn't make sense. But by and large, most of the guys are trying to find a happy marriage. They're trying to find the best team that can offer them the most, not just the the what what is, you know, I think a lot of teams that lose recruits like to put it out as is that, oh, well, we lost them because of money. Well, that's not always the case. Not for every guy, not for every loss, and not for every recruit you think you were supposed to sign. And, and definitely not when it's so drastic. I don't think Northwestern could have paid like a, a million dollars to come play for them. Mm, right no, nah, nah, especially being that it's a tougher school, uh, as far as a- academics, uh, you know, it's it's chi- Chicago. It's close to Chicago. All right. What do that mean for me? That, those but are other than ones. that's literally, be, I was going to say, that's literally the only thing you have. Not enough. It's not. I mean, it shouldn't not be. Not enough. But getting that back to? Not anyway. Northwestern. No. Yeah, I wouldn't do it either. Especially if I have other offers. But... One thing should be learned from your 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 classiness and how you dealt with the Aaron Scott situation because I also have to deal with the Dylan Stewart situation. Now, hey, I, th- I think you said last week something along the lines that Dylan Stewart was a south like a southern guy. He's from DC. So him going to South Carolina eh, is the DMV not like at least partially southern, but it's not Georgia, you know what I mean? I don't know. Sure. Okay. Fine. So I guess when I look at it and say South Carolina, but that I mean that's 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 closer area than Ohio State, it's Alabama, closer. or Georgia. It's closer, but like for you to not be a uh, an actual South player, like a player from the South, and you're not going to a Georgia or Bama, <laughs> you're going to South Carolina. You're not going to Clemson. I don't. I don't know. What Shane Beamer and them is doing down there, right? And even on the football side of it, I'm not all the way there, right? Like, you, you're not going to convince me last year was was the step forward that I think a lot of South Carolina fans think it was. They got very fortunate with some of those those bigger wins, mainly Clemson and, and Tennessee. They were very fortunate. I feel like one of those teams where, like, at the end of their season, they knew it wasn't going to amount to much. They so they played Kubnick, started the damn game. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm wondering why everybody is so, okay, Club, he's going to be better than JJ. Oh, really? I, I hope to see that. I don't think that's going to happen. I hope to see it. He performed in the Tennessee game, but he didn't perform in, I think, the South Carolina game. Like, it was, yeah. he had, like, two interceptions or some shit. And then South Carolina's game against Tennessee, obviously, Hinton and Hooker was, was already injured at that point. So, yeah. I, I don't know. But they were recruiting their asses off. This is two cycles in a row. That they they've swiped a a top ten defensive recruit from one of us, 
right? It was Nicholas Harbor last year. It, it, it's Dylan Stewart this year. They're getting better very quickly. Yes. So like like that was that was my point of kind of tampering the expectations on what they are today, because they are going to be very good, like noticeably better within the next year or two, mm. with the guys that they're bringing in. I, I I I don't necessarily see what the appeal is, but they are they're they're getting guys, so it's something. It's just you like to see it, you know, turn into maybe ten wins. I wouldn't because I want Dylan Stewart to take that call when we start calling him. But, you know, well, it is what it one is. One hope, I suppose. The Pac-12 is down to literally four teams. Washington State, Oregon State, uh, Stanford, and they don't even have Utah anymore. I can't remember who the last team is. I'm not going to lie. I didn't want, I didn't want Oregon and Washington. I guess I get why it makes sense having those teams all out in that block, you know, USC, Oregon, Washington, so that when this whole round robin, everybody pick a, a guaranteed game or don't bullshit leaves in two years, we'll be able to structure this so that we can have the schedules make sense geographically. Like if you're going to have this far stretching conference across the country it makes zero sense. It, it, it's what lets me know that these people are so fucking greedy. Because they don't care about efficiency. They care about volume. They want gross. They just want more. They don't care about doing it right or effectively. They just want more. Yeah, no, that's, that's fair. Right? I just watched the new Big Ten commissioner on Big Ten Media Days. Look me dead in my eyeballs and say, hey, my marching orders is to get this right, you know. Focus on UC, US, uh, USC and UCLA, and we'll talk further expansion down the road. But right now, we need to worry about the teams we just added. Two days later, it was reported <laughs> that they were joining the Big Ten. Yeah, no, you're not focusing on USC when they didn't want Oregon to come to the Big Ten. Just greed. Just, just greed. Gluttonous. They heard that them teams was getting ready to go to the Big 12, which, let them go. Let them go. Even if you plan on getting the 20 teams, could you not do without Oregon or you or, or Washington? Oregon better fit. Washington? Uh, but either, both of them in, in its case. You take out Oregon and maybe take two of those teams that went to the Big 12, Arizona and Utah, you kind of solve some of your problems with that because I, I don't understand why people don't know what the U.S. map looks like. Iowa to Arizona? Come on, man. You you could. The three hour flight, if that. Yeah. Uh uh Wisconsin to to Wisconsin to Utah. I mean that that's not the whole the most hellacious climb, man. And if you had them playing them each other on a regular basis, you can kind of normalize the traveling costs a little bit then you can keep the Big Ten teams that are currently in the Big Ten, for the most part, playing each other and not have to worry about cross-time zone travel as much. Or at least having such a, a drag. Because Central Time to, to, to Western or Mountain Time, not Western, what is that? Yeah, that's Western Standard Time, right? The West Coast? What is that? I'm there's saying that there's wrong. mountain and then there's Pacific there's like time. There's like LA, Nevada, Pacific. Pacific there you go. So like, if you change it to from 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 Central time to to Pacific time, or from Central or from Central to Mountain time, it's not as bad. That you're talking about difference of a couple of hours. You talking about coming from the Eastern Seaboard all the way to 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 the Pacific time zone? You're literally going back in time to play a football game. Yeah, I uh, I see a pro, and being that I'm a college football fan, I am also greedy, and this means a lot of great matchups. But the logistics of it, like you said, don't really make sense. And me having to now stay up until 9, 30, 10 o'clock to see some of these games now is going to suck. And then I think we missed the mark on who I really wanted to join, which was Utah. 
And I think we I think we still get Notre Dame. I think we still get Notre Dame, but we'll see. Those are the two yeah. those are the two names after Oregon and Washington that I would have wanted to see. And we're not getting Utah now. Yeah, yeah, Utah's in the Big Twelve. I don't I don't know why. I mean I, I sure. I mean that that is a much better geographical fit for them for sure. Then that's five um, there's that's five teams out there at least. And then Nebraska, so that's six. In all honesty, as far as regionalizing your conference, the Big Twelve has done the best. I just think the Big Ten has the largest map, and that means a lot of TV revenue money. They're just literally greedy. They're this gonna probably greedy. go after I don't know if Clemson's going to actually do it, but they're going to probably go after Clemson and, and FSU to, or the Miami. The only way Clemson Miami. gets out of the, the ACC is that $120 million buyout. The only way that they would even entertain taking that on is if the Big Ten is going to pony up some money to get them out of that. Now, is it worth it for them to do so? I mean, they're definitely going to have an increase in revenue over the next two years. They're adding four teams. I think they'll have the money to do it. So I don't even think it's fair what Florida State and Clemson are asking for. Like, we're carrying water for these other teams. And it's like, well, I mean, come on, man. It's, it's a revenue share. It's not supposed to be a reward. The conference made this money. We're going to split it evenly to keep the conference afloat. Like, that's what that is supposed to be. Yeah. It's not a, oh, well, we're the two best programs and everybody else is trash. So really, they're only watching ACC football for us. Well, I mean – NC State got 30,000 people at their stadium, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, like uh, Syracuse packs out their stadium. Well, not packs out, but they got people buying tickets and students and a football team, too. Like, why would I acquiesce to that if I was one of the presidents of those other universities? Why, why, would, I, why would I ever do that? Because let's say Dabo Sweeney gets fired tomorrow. You think Clemson's going undefeated the next year? Then, then when's the argument going to be? So now, here I am, Syracuse. I got a better record than Clemson. Pay me more. Yeah, yeah. You keep it even because that's what it was supposed to be. That's what it, the, the revenue was for, to split evenly amongst the teams in the ACC. You don't ask for more because you've been better. Or not even a Syracuse. What about a UNC with Drake May and... UNC, NC State, any of them. Wake Forest. Why would I ever agree to that? Yeah, let me let me pay you more money because you dabbo. Uh, how about no? You're... They're... More than likely going to lose the ACC this year to somebody, be it FSU or maybe UNC. I got FSU, but I mean, chances it are it's not going to work out for them. The, the countrywide map, it would complete the countrywide map uh, if we get somebody from the South. Let me ask you: Do you think that this is kind of destroying the fabric of what college football was with the super conferences? Now, we all saw this coming, first of all. So. Mm -hmm. We've had plenty of time to be like, okay, let's slow this down. Let's stop this. So before I get into that, that's that should be noted at the very least. Mm -hmm. It's yet to be seen if it's going to completely ruin it. Because, I mean, what's going to stop the traditions? If anything, this is going to bring back some of the, some of the classic rivalries. Now, obviously, it's going to remove some of them in some states. But for the most part, it's, it's bringing back... USC and, and Michigan and you know some of those some of those classic rivalries that we didn't get to see for a while so I don't think it takes away from tradition I think it helps some people with recruiting but it remains to be seen what this the transfer portal and NIL are all going to do to ruining college football so I'm gonna split my answer up into two uh kind of two things like I'm, I'm gonna address specifically what the pack what the big 10 did to the pack 12 what the big 10 did to the pack 12 and then also just kind of like college football in general with with the college football in general take it it's to think that this version of college football is destroying the fabric of college football if that's where you're at you would have had to have been of the thinking that it was ever about anything more than the dollar. And I'm saying since 1875, when the first pick stand was sewn together, well, let me not take it that far. When football became a collegiate sport and not just a club game, 
you know, that plumbers and electricians do on their downtime. Yeah. That is when the fabric, right, of college football was destroyed, if that is if that was even a thing. Mm-hmm. Right? The fabric of college football, since it became a business, has been money. Always. It doesn't what it really doesn't matter what period you point to 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 try and 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 well it was more tribal and it was more regional. That was just a way of making money. It was formed that way to exacerbate your tribalism. These schools and these mascots and all the traditions around them were specifically created to exploit your tribalism. Now, to Mike Lee, you know, if I ever wanted to be have something about my character exploited, exploit my love for wherever I'm at, that's fine. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I'm getting kind of twisted up here. Yeah, that didn't sound I, right. I, I kind of anyway, get what you were saying, but yeah. For for college football purposes, I'm fine with it. But I also understand that there are people, you know, creating generational wealth off of this, and they're not the people who pay the most into it. And that has been happening since these colleges had the bright idea. Hmm. Well, if it's no longer a club sport and it's officially sanctioned game by the university, we can charge for it and create revenue for the students and other sports teams. That is the that is college football. That's the birth of college football, real college football. That's it. And that has continued to evolve, evolve and change into what we have today. Now, if you're asking, can college football be what we want it to be? I will say that it's not going to look or feel right for a couple of years because everything's going to be new. Everything's going to be different and people hate change. So they're going to fight against this tooth and nail, even though it's coming. Right. Well, plus the playoffs are also going to be changing too. So the whole thing is. I I actually think the playoffs is what spearheaded all of this. When you, when you like people complain about Maryland and Rutgers going to the big 10, I, I, who gives a fuck? Like, we needed an underbelly for the conference. We got some. Like, who who cares? If Maryland and Rutgers were winning Big Ten championships, maybe I would, like, feel a certain way about that. I think people who complain about shit like that are very weird. But, um, so I didn't really care about that. But when you, when you make it to where 12 teams can make the playoff, you're almost enticing the conferences at that point to beef up to beef up for conference supremacy. They have the most options to make that thing. Yeah. That's the way it is in college basketball. You're creating a college basketball-esque type of, of setup for your tournament. So naturally, people are going to try, especially the conferences, are going to try and strengthen themselves as much as they can. So you can have the most amount of options to go into that thing. Because the more teams you got, the more revenue you create, the more you split. Yeah. Makes sense. Right? The, the second thing is the Big Ten and what they did to Pac-12. The writing was on the wall for a long time about the Pac-12. If you pay attention to college football, somebody was going to do it to them. The Big Ten jumped first. They were food. They, they were food. Even the best teams in their conference weren't winning anything. And they when they were winning shit, they still couldn't sell out the stadiums. USC is a national brand, one of the oldest programs in college football history, and they can't pack the Coliseum. They can't pack it. Big Ten audiences? Nebraska, Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Michigan State. They're going to fill that thing. You, you, oh, Californians, y'all, y'all at the beach? We, we at the football stadium, fam. We'll hit the beach after the game. The sun's still going to be out. We'll be out. Sun's, we play games at 9 a.m. over here, so... We can go hit the beach after. We'll be here. They That's travel well and they sell out. And I would definitely take a trip out to LA to go see a college football game and then Are you crazy? A weekend yeah, trip? The, the Absolutely. Michigan USC game, but man, but what? In, in the college stadium? <laughs> oh yeah, we there. During yeah. college football season? Yes. 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 But they can't do that. They couldn't do that for their own fandom. They couldn't do that for their own fandom. The writing was kind of on the wall about the Pac-12. 
And so when they got into that little Weasley agreement with them in the in the, in the Big 12 about the alliance, and then they proceeded to immediately raid that both conferences proceeded to immediately raid that conference. Like they were goobers, they were food from the beginning. They were defenseless. Show so give us your thoughts on everything we discussed here. Let us know what you thought. Put your thoughts in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and come back next week for another House Divided episode. Absolutely, and make sure you check out our previous video where we kind of thought something was going to happen with Oregon. So we were kind of talking a little bit about that, uh, how conference uh, expansion and specifically divisions might help the Big Ten in the long run. Uh, and then make sure you check out check us out every week. Uh, we'll obviously have one of these out once a week.